الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ربي زدني علما فقال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما قدر الله حق قدره والأرض جميعا قبضته يوم القيامة والسماوات مطويات بيمينه سبحانه وتعالى عما يشركون صدق الله العظيم This ayah that I have just recited to you comes from Surah Zumar Surah Az-Zumar, I was going to tell you the meanings of these words, but before that, I want to recap what we talked about a couple weeks ago. We tried to understand the meaning of Allahu Akbar in the mightiness of the universe that has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we compared the weight of an average North American to the mass of the planet Earth. And the mass of the planet Earth to that of a sun, and sun in the solar system, and sun to the nearby planets and stars, to that of the galaxy that we live in, which is the Milky Way, to the millions of galaxies which are part of this particular cluster, where are galaxies, one small one out of so many thousands of them which are much larger, larger than it, and our cluster is one of the many clusters that make up a super cluster, and there are many super clusters in this universe that we have seen yet. 37,000 super clusters is all we have seen. Where each supercluster has cluster, millions of them, and each cluster has millions of galaxies, and each galaxy has billions of stars and planets. And now think about this mightiness of the universe to us as a human being. How little are we? Not even a sand grain equal to in compared to the universe. And this universe, in front of the kursi, is like in a big plane, a small bangle. And the kursi that you learn about, wasi'a kursiyuhu samawati wal ard, is in front of the arsh, like in a big plane, a small bangle. So that's what's our worth? Nothing. And yet, the human being, despite the fact, is worthless, has been made what? The khalifatul ard the caretaker of the planet earth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when opens up this ayah says, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ They have not appraised Allah with true appraisal. They didn't worship Him the way He should be worshipped. They didn't respect Him the way He must have been respected. Yet He is so غفور الرحيم that if you have iman in your heart, He will enter you in the jannah. Because nobody will enter in the Jannah out of their good deeds. In order to enter the Jannah, you need the Rahmah of Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is basically the worth of a human being in terms of its might. You may become a Mr. Universe, but you probably have grown in muscles, yet your size is nothing. You may become the ruler of the planet Earth. Nobody has yet become the ruler of the planet Earth. When Alexander the Great tried to roam around the planet Earth, the known Earth, to them, he was able to get through half of it. And the times of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu came, he bypassed his size. So the times are changing, but nobody has ruled the whole Earth yet. And what is the place of the Earth in the universe we just talked about last week, a couple weeks ago and also today? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا قَدْرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ They didn't appraise of him as they should have appraised him. And look at this. وَالْأَرْضُ جَمِيعًا قَبْضَتُهُ Everything, all kinds of lands that you see in the universe is what? In his hand, will be in his hand, in his qabda, يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ And and like scrolls, the skies will be rolled in his right hand. This all this might will be like dust. Gone. That's his might. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yushrikun. Exalted is he and high above what they associate with him. 
Now think about it with all this might. There are people in this planet who don't even consider him their God. Who totally disregard him. They only believe in La ilaha. There is no God. The agnostics. And then there are people who believe in multiple gods, endless gods. Anything that they're scared of is God. And then there are people who associate rela- relatives to the, to the God Almighty. So you have all these different kind of people that are living on this planet Earth. And then on top of that, there are people who believe that, yeah, yeah, you are one God, yet... We will decide which prophets we will going to accept your prophet and which prophets will not going to accept as your prophet. So they become the deciders. So despite all this turmoil and chaos that we see in this planet Earth, yet he still exercises his Rahmanhood. What is Ar Rahman? Rahman is an unconditional giver. He gives. He gives, he gives, but then there will be a day when he will ask. When he will ask, I gave you, what did you do with it? I gave you health, I gave you wealth, I gave you wisdom, I gave you this, I gave you that. What did you do with it? And that is the day that we all the day, we remember about that day, and we say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe that day will come, Maliki yawmiddin, that day you will be the re- leader, you will be the ruler, you will be the king, and we will be answerable to you. We believe that. But here comes the question, what are we doing? That when we go in front of him, if he asks us a single question, That's it. That's it. That the person who is asked a question, why did you do it, then starts the trouble for that person. Because there will be so many of them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy will just put them in the jannah without any questions and answers. May Allah make all of us among those people. That enters the Jannah and enters Jannah al Firdaus without any question and answers. May Allah make them among those people who will have a chance to look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day when nobody else shall be allowed to look at it except for those He wishes that they can look at Him in the day of judgment and also in the Jannah. Now, in the Jannah, you look at the sky and you look at these little stars in the sky. There'll be people in the Jannah who will look up and will see these shining stars so far away. And they will wonder who these people are. And these people will be the people above them in the higher levels of Jannah. So when the Prophet told this to the companions, the companions said, Oh my God, they must be the prophets of God, that we will look up to them like we look at stars. And the prophet said, no, 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 no. They will be among those you who are salihin, who are mu'mineen, who are the pious people. They will be like that. Oh, the prophets will be way above them. The prophets will be way above them. There is no one Jannah. There are many Jannahs. There are thousands and thousands of levels in Jannah. Now people ask me questions, it happened last week that somebody asked on social media that these are the things that are talked about in the Qur'an, that I will going to get gold and silver and this and that. But I, I'm not attracted to these things, I don't want these things. I said, that's okay, but the same Qur'an talks about another thing. Didn't you read that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you will get what you desire. Nobody will be unhappy. You will get what you want. That is the phrase to catch. That is the phrase to catch. That you will see what you have never imagined. You will see what you have never even thought of. You will see what you will not even believe after seeing that this is for me. This is for me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask these people, Do you want more? And they will say, what else do I want, Ya Rabb? You have given me everything. Despite the fact I was a sinner, I'm sitting in the Jannah. What else do I want? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'll give you more and more. And one more thing, these things are everlasting. 
They will not come to an end. Your health will not deteriorate. Your clothes will never get old. You will stay in that same state forever. Now think about this hadith that a person would desire in the Jannah that he was a farmer over here. He would desire that I should do farming in the Jannah. His desire will be fulfilled in a moment of seconds. That the seeds will be sown. The field will going to grow out. Will be cut and the piles will be in front of him. So that's just an example. It's just an example. Now little kids ask me all the time. Will I get Legos in Jannah? That's what they can think of. Will I get Legos in Jannah? Will I going to get this motor car in Jannah? You know, that's how they can think. And when they grow up, they want Maserati in Jannah. But Jannah is carbon free. You have better things in Jannah. Now what are the better things in Jannah? You will think that I want to meet this person and you will be there. No Maserati can do that. No Concord can do that. In Jannah, there will going to be malls. You will go and go into those malls. When you go into those malls, you can do your buying and selling. No, no, no. No money. You just go and grab and bring home. That's it. And there will be different kinds of malls in different levels of Jannah. This is the Jannah we are talking about. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, This is what I have for you. But in this world when you are alive, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ They did not appraise the Lord the way they, he, they should have done it. They didn't do their job. But then, as a believer, I can strive hard. I can give my 100%. Maybe 101%. We have all these things attached to us, right? We have to go to work. We have families to take care of. We have kids to grow. We have other kind of responsibilities to pay attention to. Our parents may be living with us. And there are many things that happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands this. He understands this. That's why he says, you read however much Quran you can read. But then there are some basic obligations that you have to fulfill. After those basic obligations, whatever you can do. Now think about it. If you're going out to make a halal living, you are earning rewards. You're working. 10 hours, 12 hours, 15 hours, overnight, you're getting hasanats, rewards. Why? Because you have chosen the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked you to do. You sleep at night so that you could be up next day, fresh in the morning, that you pray and then you leave and then you can work because you want to give 100% to your work because that is your also obligation. You're getting hasanats for sleeping. You're playing with your kids. You're getting hasanats for playing. If you take a bite and put it in your wife's mouth, you get hasanats for that too. Just for just by looking at your family, your parents with love and compassion, you get hasanats for that. When you are in Kaaba, looking at the Kaaba, you get hasanat. Just looking at it. Don't do anything. Just look at it. Subhanallah. You get a hasana. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. You get a hasana. Allahu Akbar. You get a hasana. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin. You get a hasana. What else does a believer want? You drive to work. 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 5 minutes. Do you sit in the car and you read the dua of, of, of traveling? When you reach your destination, do you read the dua of destination? When you are traveling, do you? Say any kind of a dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or do you contemplate in your head, how can I improve myself as a human being? How can I do better? What will I do different? How can I be more productive today? What can I give back to the world today? So that's, there's a lot of things to be done. A lot of things to be done. So Quran and Hadith is there to be read, understood and applied. But are we willing to do so is the question. The translations are available. So you can't say there is no translation. I can't understand it. No, the translations are available. Even the tafasir, the explanations are available in the language of choice. 
and not one, many of them. But are we willing to put forth any time during the week? Okay, let's put aside Monday through Friday. What about the weekends? Any time during those two days, 48 hours, that we are willing to set aside that I want to know about my Lord. I want to learn more about my religion so I can improve myself. I can be a better individual. I can go to the next level. Now, I always give this example. You may probably have heard from this from me many times, but it is so true. Think about it. A guy who works in a factory, a guy who works as a nurse, a guy who works as a developer, he's hired at the age of 24 at the salary of $40,000 a year. And when he retires after 40 years, he still gets $40,000 a year. What were you going to say of that person? Probably something is seriously wrong. But as a believer, I have start praying at the age of 10, and I keep praying till I die. But do I see my graph steady, or is it going up? Am I spiritually improving, or am I actually going in decline? Where is my that devotion to my Lord, my God? Where, where do I stand as an individual? If I plot myself on the graph, where do I stand? So there are a lot of things as an individual we need to think about. There is no blame game. Nobody should ever, ever try to put anybody down. That's against the principles of Islam. And we have seen that in many examples of the prophets. The best of the best examples in the humanity. That whenever people would make fun of them, they won't make fun back. They will be the nicest people to respond back. And among the common people, the pious people, they do the same thing. I'm going to, I'm going to end this with just one small story. We brought one such case in front of one of our teachers. And he said, I'm going to tell you something from the history. During the case, during the times of Chengiz Khan, there was a lot of destruction on the planet Earth. He was destroying through humanity. He wanted to conquer it all. So he reached one of the villages of the Muslims. And there was a man roaming around in the jungles that one of his men saw, and the man had a beard. So this general took his dogs, you know, the, those dogs that are not the security dogs. They literally go out and hunt. Along with his soldiers to this man, and he wants to instigate him. And he asked him a question. He said, do you look at my dog? He said, yeah, look at your dog. He said, is the tail of my dog better or your beard? Your beard is better or the tail of my dog? Now the beard is the sunnah. He could have gone and fired. And he could have done something that would have caught himself in trouble. But you know, he was a wise man. He evaluated the situation and he responded wittedly, yet very effectively. He said, this beard that you see of mine, I've kept it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he accepts it, then it is better than the tail of your dog. But if he doesn't accept this, your dog's tail is better. And that one answer moved that general. Moved him. Instead of instigating him, he said, you should come with me. I want to learn about your faith. Who are you? So these are the kind of things you have to analyze and think about the situations. And then handle them effectively. It is a job of a Muslim that you are a believer. You are able to use your knowledge wisely. Everybody should be effective in communication to their capacity. I would highly recommend these people who are going to colleges take classes in communications. Take classes in public speaking. Now my major was computer science and mathematics. I took classes in departments that you wouldn't even believe to improve the communication skills. Even though all my school life I, was, I had done a lot of public speaking, yet I was never trained in it. I was never trained in it. That was all natural. But I wanted to learn about it. So I took classes in world religions. 
the senior level classes in the department of religion i went and learned about 10 different religions in the same semester i went out to other religions and visited their places of worship and interviewed their priests those classes had nothing to do with my major i took a class in which i had to study the books of other religion because i'm living in a place where i need to understand my fellow american so my head is broadened i'm not living in a little shell it is easy to bring a man out of the village but the idea is to take the village out of the man so that his horizon opens up and he can think he is acceptable aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'iril muslimin fastaghfiruhu innahu huwal ghafurur rahim